like into you, Rabbi, from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And by the time you're watching this, I'll be on my holes. I'm having a bit of vacation. I'm really quite looking forward to it. I haven't had a vacation since, like, before Corona, where you, um... We were looking for like, like an Airbnb in the middle of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a very touristy city, right? So I'm uh, uh, probably out eating. <laughs> That's probably what's going on. Probably out eating with my wife uh, or eating my wife. It depends. You know, it dep depends how good the day's going. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the less said about that, the prob probably the better, probably better. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, 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 and, and you know, if you want to know what to comment, say, I hope you enjoy your, your holiday, Rabbi, because you know what? You should hope that. <laughs> A well-rested, uh, uh, calm, uh, you know, calm Rabbi is one I think everybody could use in their life. So like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, let me know what you think. Sign up to my Substack. My Substack is my email newsletter, but it's more than that. It's more than the email newsletter. Some people have described as a portal to total truth, right? Where you can uh, reach within it and you can pull out the divine secrets of the universe. Uh, uh, people have done that. They've told me and they've... Uh uh, uh, they've experienced incredible success in, in business, in love, in parenting, uh, in, in everything. Now, of course, of course, results may vary. <laughs> You know, results may vary is the most wonderful catch-all, isn't it? Results may vary. But uh, e even if that doesn't happen, thank you for signing up my Substack. Uh, uh, oh, definitely sign up my, my YouTube. Uh, I, I've had a bit bit, bit of a flurry in the last few days. I think if I get one, another 15, 20 people to, uh, to subscribe, then I break through the boundary, the impossible boundary I have. Uh, uh, <laughs> just don't let me get yeah, get through. So I think we need a, if we have a bit of a push, that would really, really, really super help. With impossible boundary, kind of like that one in the, in the, what was it, Star Trek V? Now, somebody told me there was the, 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 there was an impossible boundary at the centre of the universe in Star Trek lore. I don't remember seeing that. Wasn't that... Uh, I thought it was at the edge of the universe and where no man went before. Is that one? But apparently at the centre of the universe is one as well. So uh, it's kind of like that. So like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Sign up my sub stacks. All right, paid sub stack where you get a, a fabulous, fabulous uh, content that I, that I almost... Almost on a daily level, forget to send out to you, right? Or no, don't forget, I kind of run out of time. Although, I have to tell you, this is the second day where I'm like, uh, uh, just been using my, my, my new computer, a, a wonderful gift from my wife. Oh my God. My life is so much freaking better, okay? My life is so much crazily freaking better. I, it's, I'm recording this at uh, one o'clock. Normally, I I would I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to record this day. I, I I what what I would have done between now and one would have taken me to like three or four, just waiting for my computer to like crash and wake up and all those other things. It's so weird having it just work and work quickly and work well. Uh, I'm really not sure what to do about that. <laughs> you know, it's 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 it, 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 it blowing my mind a little bit. So. Uh, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's, that's I don't know how I got to that. But yeah, that's another little snippet from life. Fine. Like, share, subscribe, comment, subscribe, all those things are good. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, screen Rant. Don't you just love a bit of Screen Rant? So Screen Rant has been on, on a bit... Yeah, they're in a bit of a weird world right now. You know, they spent the last few years going, Jodie Whittaker. Wow. Wow. That Doctor Who is so popular and so fat. Everybody loves it. Everybody, oh, Russell Davis here, fuck that, fuck that. Oh my God, Russell, save us, save us. That, that's really what the ten or the, and then like every now and again they remember, oh God, we have a printed history of saying that Jodie Whittaker is very popular and everybody loves her, it's the best ever, anybody doesn't like her, uh, uh, is an evil bigot, right? Evil, pure evil bigot. They may have even voted for Trump. They may have even voted for Brexit. That's how evil they are, right? Right? And then they and then they have to throw out another article and go, oh, we're all looking forward to a final episode. But mostly, mostly it's like, oh my God, I can't wait till this shit is over. And you know, yeah, if I may quote Hillary Clinton, I think we're stronger together, right? I do, I do. I think we're a stronger people together. Uh, 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 and you know, this uh, finally we have something that we can all kind of agree on. That uh, we, uh, I'm looking forward to new Doctor Who. I, I hope you are too. I mean, I know a lot of people aren't, right? A lot of people are super, super burnt. And you know, I, I, that's generally speaking true across all the fandoms. You know, it's, I mean, Star Trek especially. Uh, I, I I really quite like Strange New Worlds. I thought that was a. Um, 
uh, a Star Trek he like series. It felt and looked like Star Trek. It, you know, episodic. Uh, you know, it just everything. There was a few, you know, irritatingly 2022 ideas in there, but other than that, mostly. It was a Star Trek-y series, and it was, I think it was doing something kind of new with it as well. Everything I liked about it, I really did. I did not everything. Most things I liked about it, and, and I think objectively it's quite good. I, I'm finding people are not willing, right? Are not willing to say, no, no, it must be awful because it's part of the... It doesn't invalidate your criticisms of anything, saying that something new is good and, uh, and done by the same people who, who have done absolute dire... Garbage, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a doer now. Uh, um, the two things can be can be true at once, right? <laughs> two things can be true. So I, I listen. A lot of people are, um, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, 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 very nervous, yeah, you know, about about where this new doctor is going. I'm optimistic. I'm a, basically I'm a, I'm a more optimistic guy. It's kind of what I like, especially as yeah, Star Trek and Star Wars and Doctor Who. They are with if, you know not depressing things. They are generally speaking optimistic. Uh, uh, you know, upward, you know, upward the uh, uh, upwardly mobile, so, you know, up, no, uh, uh, uplifting. That's the word, uh, uplifting thing. Even Westworld, right? Westworld, I, th that season, just, uh, that series, I think, just finished. I don't think they're getting a fifth season. Maybe they will. To me, it really doesn't matter. But uh, that ended on spoiler alert. Big spoiler alert. If you're one of four people still watching Netflix, uh, still watching uh, Westworld, uh, which was very good, right? It ended on a bigger down than Plank 7, but even that was kind of uplifting to the end. Like, you know, the complete extinction of all life. <laughs> you know? so, but it wasn't just the Plank 7 crew dying. It was everybody. Every, and not just all the characters. Everybody dies, right? Everybody dies. Uh, uh, but it's still kind of an uplifting thing. But I think that's generally true of genre, right? Genre is for people who like to think a bit differently, uh, look at the world a little bit differently. And uh, uh, I, I generally speaking, reasonably optimistic. I think that's why having us kicked in the balls relentlessly for five years has not been good for our group psyche. Anyway, they're all kind of excited. Rusty News come back, and they, they're full of ideas, full of great ideas for them. So let's look at some of them. Will they be as good as some of their ideas they had over the last few years? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Fine. Doctor Who has wasted unit. Well, not really. I, I mean... Um... They, I honestly, I wasn't really a fan of the uh, of the Kate Lethbridge Stewart unit. I found her a list. I, I like the clip military tones of uh, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. You know, I like the idea of there being a military uh, uh, working for good, right? Working for a, a greater good. I thought that. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't like the idea that military is always bad, right? It's always like, oh, it's a uh, evil oppressive system. No, sometimes you've got to fight evil, right? And I think, you know, I, that yeah, that's what I liked about Lefrey Stewart. You know, he, he he had that core, uh, uh, well, fantasy idea of Britishness of being about being yeah, you know, very proper but awfully very fair, right? Uh, uh, and you know, they they they, they have very twenty twenty two ish content with the uh, Brigadier Lefrey Stewart and Big Finish. Now they had one story where where uh, I, what was it the um one the you one of the scientific advisor characters in unit were gay and and, and it was in the 70s and then and, and they were they were hiding it right I, I, I can't remember but it was something like that they were hiding it and and at the end the brigand says you know what uh, uh, what one does in the privacy of their own home uh, uh you know off house none of my business sir and i i wish you uh, every success so uh, which seems very left restuity to me right i i i like that a lot you know uh, you know, actually, if we're talking about great left Stewart Stuart moments, there's what was it, one of the third Doctor um, uh, uh, big finish uh, uh, ones with uh, Tim Trelaw playing the third Doctor. They got the Brigadier, is it Benton or Mike Yates? They're, they're helping these uh, uh, these alien rebels against the Daleks, maybe. I can't remember again. But I do remember, like, there was this really nice, like, we must do our best by them, Benton. I think it probably was Benton. It felt, it felt like it should have been. And, you know, I do like that, right? So, a Wasted Unit? Not really. I think it's been a... A, a reasonable modern reinvention. I like the original. I I, uh, I liked um, most of the unit stuff Big Finish did as well. I kind of stopped recently. Uh, it was just like... Uh, uh, look, Big Finish, I used to be a completist with them. Like Whatever they did, they had to be pr pretty darn awful for me to steer clear. Now it's got to be stuff that I'm really quite excited about. Because I've been burnt too many times. Much like fandom. Anyway, 
how uh, Doctor Who has wasted unit, how Ralph Steve Davis can fix that. Well, I'm intrigued to hear how they've wasted unit. Let, let's hear this story first. Uh, Doctor Who wasted unit. Well, I mean that that that's your assertion. I, I'm not sure I agree with you, but okay, let's hear let's hear why. Uh, it's in universe extraterrestrial defense organization. Uh, defense organization. Here's how returning showrunner Ralph Steve Davis can fix this. Uh, apparently with Martha, right? Okay. Doctor has spent the last decade wasting the potential of UNIT, the military organization designed to combat alien threats from beyond the stars. How? I, I mean, listen, it's 2022. So since uh, 2012, uh, there's been there's been quite a few UNIT stories, and they've been good ones. I mean, I, I have a problem with Zygon Invasion, Zygon Inversion, even though I thought that was, that was at a court, a great story, and I love Capaldi, right? I love, love Capaldi. Uh, um... Yeah, uh, 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 but I didn't like the ending. I thought the ending was a real cop out, right? The the idea of uh, Zygon invasion, Zygon inversion, of basically what we do with ISIS, right? It was an ISIS uh, uh, analogy, which was big in what twenty fifteen ish, twenty thirty. Basically, it's one of the reasons that Trump became president. But uh, uh, you know, it was a big it was a big deal then. Uh, uh, and, and you know the the it was it was what you do about that and eventually eventually the doctor made a big speech and the baddie in the ISIS cycles went oh oh okay then we'll stop being naughty no no they're like uh, no we're gonna kill you <laughs> if we can we'll kill you uh, but I, I, the point being I think there's been quite a lot of good unit but let's let's hear what they got to say um, and I, honestly I I. I even liked them when they weren't even properly unit when the uh, when they uh, when they turned up in Aliens of London, right? Uh, uh, and electrocuted everyone. Uh, Doctor Who has just spent the last decade wasting their potential. Okay, blah 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 blah. As well as they were impressed. Okay, uh, really, I, I thought they were going to substantiate that, but no, well, let's see. I mean, maybe they will. I'm not holding my breath, okay? Uh, as Ralph Steve Davis appears to return to his former position as showrunner, yes! And says everybody across the world, it's hoped that the next era of the BB franchise will finally give you the attention and hopefully the spin off series that it deserves. After all, the potential is certainly there. Yeah, okay, so they want a, a spin off series. I don't see this one that, that he's going to be rushing to. I think the spin off series is going to be more based around the newer content that they're going to be making, right? I, I, maybe that will be based on the older stuff. Um, but I, I, I doubt they're going to be making a... Uh, maybe. Let's hear. Featured prominently in the classic years of uh, Doctor Who, the Unified Intel... No, what was called? It was the United Nations Intelligence Task Force, which, had to, uh, which they name-checked once. I think in Aliens of London, right? And then they got a note from... I don't know... European government saying, uh, uh, please, please do not do that. Uh, uh, so they became the Unified Intelligence uh, Task Force. It was reintroduced by Rusty Davis for the show's revival. Uh, at least you're saying revival. Okay, you get points for that. Where they uh, assisted in the 10th Doctor aboard the Secret Spaceship on Christmas Day in 2006. Oh, yeah. That was good. I like that. I totally forgot about that. They're under... Uh, uh, it was under uh, uh, Tower of London, wasn't it? That, that was one of their many secret bases. Martha Jones, a former uh, companion of the Time Lord, even ended up working for them and played their most uh, played them uh, their most uh, significant part in the revived series during Stephen Moffat's run as showrunner, led by Gemma. Re and they oh, fine, we're talking about the Gemma Redgrave one, formidable Kate Leftridge Stewart. She never struck me as that that formidable. Uh, when the controversy, I mean. She didn't really do much in the uh, Doctor Who flux other than blow up and run away. Uh, uh, but she didn't seem to do that much anyway. Uh, oh, go. So I just had a picture of the, the Predator prequel. I've really got to check that out. Everybody says it's, right. it's not awful, right? If people are saying it's not awful, maybe it's good. Uh, Let my demo go the formal Cape Leftwich Stewart when the controversial Chris Chibnall picked up the bat in 2017. He elected to cut down units' involvement in the Hooniverse drastically. Uh, though they finally uh, returned during Doctor Who season 13, a.k.a. Flux. Y yeah. And, and uh, do you believe what he said? Well, that was always our plan. So, so they say, oh, no, we cut you because of Brexit, because Brexit's evil. Oh, yeah, but I'm going to have my doctor tell you where to go. Here, I, I'll help anyone, me, anyone at all. Oh, oh, unless, unless they vote for Brexit. Oh, they're bad people. They're stupid little fetus. Oh, I, uh, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what she said. Uh, 
While the Task Force has played a key part in almost every major era of Doctor Who, the modern... Well, not really. I mean, there, there wasn't really much unit with Peter Davison, was there? I'm trying to think of any. They had the soldiers in... Uh, um, well, not Revelation of the Daleks. It was uh, Resurrection of the Daleks. But they weren't unit soldiers. I don't. Th I don't think they were. I. I uh, we had. Yeah. Le uh, Lefrey Stewart in. Uh, uh, Mortar and Undead. It really didn't make any sense. By the way, the big. It, it, it was really supposed to be. Uh, uh, what was it in Chesterton? But uh, William Russell, I think, was uh, wasn't available. So uh, uh, they said, "Oh, we'll make it the Brigadier." And thus we have the unit dating problem. Uh, but yeah, good for them. I thought it was a, a strong series. A, a strong, a strong story. While the uh, the Tussles uh, has played a part in almost every day uh, in the modern era, the uh, modern series has thus far failed a uh, unit in one simple regard. It deserved a televised spin-off venture that has yet to receive one. Well, there was nearly one with Russ C. Davis. It was budgeted. You know, this is how successful he was the first time round, right? There was going to be an alternative to dimension Rose Tyler special. Rose Tyler, Earth Defense which was basically Unit, right? It was Rose Tyler and Unit. And Russell Day was like, oh, no, I think there's too much Doctor Who going on. We're, we're going to uh, um, yeah, dilute the brand. And, and he, at the time, he was right, right? I do agree with him. Uh, wait, wait, uh, it's a, uh, a hypothetical Unit spin-off would be perfect vehicle to showcase the inevitable alien incursions that take place while the Doctor is away from their travels, uh, uh, on their travels in the cos cosmos. Okay. In the same vein as Torchwood and Sarah Jane Adventures in class. Well, it, again, it, during uh, uh, Rossi Davis' era, so we had uh, Torchwood and uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Jane Adventures and Doctor Who going at the same, at the same time. A unit would have been just redundant on top of Torchwood. I mean, I what I liked about those three shows is they served dramatically different demographics, right? And they served them all very well. Uh, class I never liked. I, I saw the first episode of Capaldi in it and everything else. I was like, yeah, leave me alone. Uh, and also, it, 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 it suffered from Please Sir. You ever seen Please Sir, one of the great 70s sitcoms uh, where about a bunch of school children and, a, and their teacher? Uh, uh, well, the school children, I don't know. By the, by the time they made the spin-off movie, which they did. He did a lot in the 70s. Uh, uh, the police uh, movie. They looked like they are in their 40s, the school kids. You know? <laughs> it, was just, it was a bit weird, right? It was a bit weird. Oh, man. And they took they took the piss out of the Muslim kid by having him uh, join in the farm by causing trouble, by having to uh, uh, stop and pray every, every you know, regularly, right, to disrupt things. Uh, um, boy, that wouldn't happen today. And and again, I don't think that was hateful to Muslims. I think that was kind of like, hey, you want the gang now, right? But in case, uh, uh, of course, today's uh, idiots will be like, no, no, that's the worst ever. Um, it will uh, it'll be perfect bringing back former Doctor Who nemesis and characters without overloading the mothership with cameos. Granted, Big Finish released several uh, lines, including uh, of incredible audio drama, which focus on unit. But it would nevertheless just a uh, uh, just a well worked on screen too. Probably, I, I get it. Doesn't it seems a bit dull, right? It seems a bit like just predictable. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, uh, I mean, it's okay. I, you know, something that I think that probably would have worked really well on screen is they did a Donna Noble spin off, Donna Noble Kidnap, which had the Tenth Doctor in it as like a. Uh, like a false projection cameo thing. I can't remember. He, he, he wasn't in it for long. But that, if they just filmed that, right, uh, uh, and put it on screen, it would have it would have got like 8 million viewers, maybe more. It would have done very, 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 very well. But no. Uh, how Russell and Evie can fix Doctor Who's unit? Okay, so far you haven't really described the problem. Uh, and your solution is, let's make a unit TV show. Well, well okay. Again, this, I mean, I don't know. It feels like it's someone who's just seen Doctor Who for the first time and go, Wait a minute! I have an idea! We could do a whole TV show! About Unit! Yeah, okay, yeah, we've all thought of that, darling. Uh, with the, I mean, uh, Derek Sherwin was try, trying to get a Unit show off the ground in the 90s, I believe. There was a good Doctor Who special, uh, which, uh, uh, which would focus on Unit. Uh, was it Richard Pierce Reiner? Did a great illustrated cover uh, uh, for that special, and uh, 
And also, they had uh, uh, they had a picture of Brian Blessed as a future doctor, right? But in there, Derek Sherwin talked about it. Said, "Oh yeah, I'm working on a a a, a spinoff." Uh, it never came back, of course. Uh, with the return of Rusty Davis as shows around the executive producer on Doctor Who uh, on the horizon, now it could, uh, now uh, w uh, would be a better time than ever to offer unit its uh, long overdue televised solo series. I, I honestly, again, it seems like a retrograde step. It, it, they may do something, but if it's if they do, I think it's going to be new. It's going to be a very new take on you now, which is what I think. Look, uh, Sarah Jane Adventures and Tortures were new, right? It was part of the new law, and that's that's the thing I, th I think Rusty Davis is is interested in. I don't think he's that interested in uh, member berries, right? Even though he loves member berries, right? I love member berries. You love member. He loves member berries. But, you know, like a great chef, he knows how to use them, right? Yeah, adds them into the mixture. Well, like uh, uh, Chris Chimnall uses member berries kind of like uh, a, a uh, untalented cook using uh, truffle oil. <laughs> You're like, let me just put this on everything and I can pretend it's posh, right? That'll do the trick. Uh, we'll be up to uh, Davis, after all, is responsible for the uh, uh, conception of Torchwood and Sarah Jane Adventures, both of which are the uh, BBC's flagship show's uh, most successful ventures into the expanded media, which is why he's back, right? Which is why he's back, to create the Doctor Who streaming network channel, which, okay, I'm kind of excited. Uh, uh, serious focus on, uh, on Unit would un uh, undoubtedly tick all the same boxes and more, a uh, premise uh, is ugly, more mainstream, and since the the Unified Intelligence Force is a world leading organization, the scope and scale is greater than any of the preceding spin offs. Not really. Uh, um, look, honestly, I think it's a bit of a dud of an idea, right? I'd love to see it, but I just think it's a bit dull, right? Just dull. Which is why I stopped buying the units uh, uh, spin offs, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the audios. Last one I did, I, bought, I got Nemesis. And I didn't finish listening to it. I was like, oh God, I'm just bored. And I like, had the, what, the nine in it. Uh, uh, is it the nine or the 11 or one of them? Uh, great villain. And it was still dull. Uh, uh, so prior to returning, he, he uh, confessed to the franchise uh, is in need of more spin series. Well, this is when he was in full swing on negotiation, right? Uh, we will be sitting here announcing the Nissa. Oh, just imagine. We're sitting here inventing the Nissa Adventure, the return of Donna Noble. Uh, you should you should have had the 10th and 11th Doctor together in a 10 part series, he admitted uh, in the interview with the indicator of the Hooniverse. Uh, fans are in for a treat. Yes, we are, right? But I think we're in for a fresh treat, not uh, uh, not warmed up leftovers, which I think what a unit series will be. And go, don't get me wrong. I like it, right? But uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's just way too predictable. Either way, the future of Doctor Who has never been brighter now that Chris gibnall has gone, even though we kept saying he was the bestest ever. Right, so that that one is relatively normal compared to this next idea, uh, 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 which gets a bit more bonkers. Doctor Who's perfect spin-off could copy The Mandalorian. No, don't copy anything. Be original. Do your own work, right? Do your own thing. Be original. It's a good idea. Uh, Robert's home final creation, uh, Intergalactic Rogue's uh, Rogue Sablon Glitz, will be the perfect character to lead a Doctor Who spinoff in the, in the Mandalorian world. He's dead, okay? Tony Selby's dead, isn't he? I mean, I think so. Let's have a look. Okay, one second. Uh, to was it Toby Selby, is it? Selby or Tony? Uh, Toby Shelby Insurance. Okay, one sec. Sablon Glitz actor. We'll do that. Sablon Glitz. Actor. I mean, what, what I'm going to say, the guest star in, in Casualty, I mean, which he was a lot of time. Um, Toby Selby, okay. Let's have a look. I, yeah, he died. He died a year ago. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> okay, really? Uh, okay, tell me more. Tell me more. And, yeah, this is over a period of a few days these two articles came out together, so I know what's going on. As by Mark Donaldson, who isn't insane, right? He actually writes some decent stuff here, so, uh, uh, okay. Even though I think he, he's had a couple of disses at me in the in the in the pages of uh, Screen Rant. Uh, right, where are we up to? Um, there we go. Uh, Doctor Who Universe is a rich uh, was it a rich franchise? Uh, a rich fran ha has rich franchise potential, but the perfect spin-off instead could copy the format of the Mandalorian. Okay, in the first, I mean, the Mandalorian was the first thing that Disney, uh, uh, and only thing, 
that Disney Star Wars has done that hasn't been awful, right? It really... And, and even though... A couple of episodes, that was kind of crap too. Uh, where are we up to? In the... Uh, in the first era, showrunner Rusty Davis oversaw Spinner's torture of Sarah Jane Adventures to the acclaim of both fans and critics. Because they were good! Right? They were good. That's why it was to the acclaim. The returning Davis uh, is also on record as being interested in exploring uh, Doctor Who's potential as the MCU Star Wars-style fictional universe now that the series will be co-produced by the BBC and its dark material producer, The Bad Wolf. Uh, in reality, the an expansive universe could uh, be even closer than ever. Um, yeah, it's more Sony, right? It was that Sony deal is a big deal, right? That Sony deal means there's a lot of money, uh, uh, and there's a lot of money because you know, essentially, the problem uh, one of the major problems we're seeing in entertainment today is these idiot companies have worked out how to um, uh, uh, how to make things without anybody liking them. Right, Star Trek Discovery is on its, what, fourth or fifth season? Like, and, and nobody watches it. It's shit. It's shit that nobody watches. I, I Even people who like it don't watch it. Nobody, like, they like it because it's stunning and brave and showing how a black woman uh, can be in command. Of good. I, I, I want to ask these people, what universe do they live in? Right? Like, a woman? A woman in charge? Whoa. Oh, more than that. More than, oh, oh, my lucky stars. Is that a Negro? Oh, oh, no. Oh, I'm so scared. I mean, like, what? what where is this world that they think exists? I, 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 I really, it's so bizarre. And they know it doesn't exist, right? But if they ever admit it doesn't exist, then everything, their, their, their entire worldview just kind of crumbles, right? Like, like over, like, instantly. And, and you know, I found... It, it really does amaze me because I'm somebody who really has no problem apologizing or admitting they're wrong. Because, and the reason I have no problem because I'm a Bible thumping weirdo, right? And so I look at the people in the Bible and, and you know, the people who are, who are the archetype types, right, of what, what one is supposed to aspire to. That's why they're characters in the freaking Bible, right? All of them, I mean, the Old Testament, you know, all of them screw up very noticeably and, and you know and they and it's very very clearly documented right moses who was we're told is the the greatest prophet ever uh, uh screwed up right yeah and they and they the bible actually takes time to talk about him screwing up so I, i'm I'm a, I'm a person who actually again i believe all this stuff right i think god is real right i think we are uh, uh, um, I think we, I, I think reality is made out of God. And to 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 us is is a good analogy. Best best analogy for God uh, uh, that I've ever heard is the force. You know, it surrounds us, it binds us, it holds the galaxy together. But it also thinks so. God is the stuff that we're made out of, stuff of reality, right? Right. And so, uh, uh, you know, the Bible had a fixed number, not as a limit. It's a book. It's a limited number of words you can put in there. So the Bible is very, very careful about what it, you know what it talks about, what it doesn't talk about. So that that's part of Bible study. Say, so why did the Bible bother to tell us about Moses sin, sinning? Because every screws up, right? Every screws up, and you got to be a total schmuck to think that you you can't. But people will never, ever, ever admit they're wrong, right? I, I, what blew my mind is religious people are the same, right? Religious people are like, what? Don't you believe it? Like, what the hell? Like, you go to synagogue three times a day and you pray and you do all this crap and you spend... Do you have any idea how, how labor-intensive and expensive it is to be uh, religious Jewish? It's crazy. That seems like a lot of work to go to to miss the point, right? But still, no, nobody, nobody can ever admit they're wrong, right? So, uh, uh, so there we are. Um, battle Productions were recently acquired by Sony. Yes! Uh, who are currently exploring the Spider-Man's uh, cadre of uh, villains. It's a bit, bit of a shame that uh, uh, Venom... Not Venom. Uh, I like Venom. Uh, the other one. Mobius didn't work out. Cause that, that looked like it'd be fun. And, yeah. Although, you can tell it wasn't going to work out because Matt Smith was in it. <laughs> you know, like, uh, Matt Smith is like... Uh, uh, he has the mindless touch for movie roles, right? Any movie role that he's in uh, 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 will be... Will be t and it's weird, but it's true. And he's great. He's a fantastic actor. I mean, like, uh, uh, um, I think was it he was he was in this was it Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker, and, and he dodged the bullet. Well, because they cut him out. They said, you know, this is shit enough. We don't need Matt Smith to make this shit. Okay, it, that's how shit this is. We recorded him. We filmed him. Right. We paid him. He flew out and he was in the movie. He learned everything. He was in it. 
uh, uh, and, and, and we cut him out because it was shit enough. Really, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. Actually, aren't you surprised that Disney Plus hasn't done like a 12 hour or six hour, how long it is version of a Rise of Skywalker, which seemed to be like what they wanted to do initially in that turgid, awful movie. Uh, similarly, this could have uh, suggest this could suggest that the uh, company may be interested in exploring uh, the franchise potential of, of Doctor Who. Well, of course they are. Like Spider Man, the series has nearly six decades of heroes have been uh, located in the. Uh, yes, we know, we know, right? It's got a rich universe. Yeah, I, I am aware, right? I mean, I've got pretty much every big finish thing they put out in Doctor Doctor, Doctor Who universe. I mean, like, right? I I I, I am aware. You know, I have all the comics, I have all the books, right? Yes, I understand there is a law behind Doctor Who. Better on Doctor Who, uh, perfect spin-off originally in 1986 uh, follow a similar tone in the hugely successful Star Wars spin-off, The Mad Lawrence. So how? How are you going to take Sam Long Glitz, essentially a comedy character, uh, um, played by a dead actor? And look, Toby Selby is performance of Sablon Glitz in Sablon Glitz. It's like, it's the center of Sablon Glitz. But, okay. While Torchwood and Sarah Jane Adventures were great Doctor Who spin-offs, uh, they were both originally copied by, uh, rigidly copied by the parent show's Monster of the Week format. Um, okay. Yes, okay, that's fair enough. It's no, I think Torchwood of the first season, yes. I think the second season, under Chris Gibnall, which I thought was quite, quite good, right? I thought it was much less so. Children on Earth, not at all. Children on Earth, awesome, right? Uh, and then, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Miracle Day. God, that went on forever. <laughs> that went on forever. And like, wasn't very good. Never mind. Everybody got paid. Everybody's got, got, got to earn a living, haven't they? Uh, as exemplified by uh, the Mandalorian, the best spinners are obviously mar markedly different in tone and style. Well, no, Mandalorian was the first thing that actually felt... I mean, it's markedly different from tone and style to the rest of Disney Star Wars in that it felt kind of Star Wars-y, right? So uh, there is that. The Mandalorian was a space western uh, rather than a space opera. Yes, but uh, come on. Star Wars was a space western. I, I, I mean, he, he, have you ever seen the scenes on Tatooine? Right? He, he, I, well, that's what... The space western was a major part of it, right? It was a major, major like the, again the 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 visuals of Tatooine made it a space western. Uh, I mean, less so as, as as it went along, but that was that that was an intrinsic part to it, right? It wasn't taking something out of context. Uh, so actually, you know what? I'm going to backtrack and say he's right. It was a space opera, uh, western rather than space opera. Uh, a space opera with a space western in it. Okay. A similar format would be uh, would suit Sablon Glitz, the last major character to be created by legendary Doctor Who writer uh, Robert Holmes. Really? Was he the last character? Uh, Glitz is an intergalactic rogue with a love of money uh, and a broken moral compass. He would be perfect character to lead the Doctor Who spin-off in the Mandalorian mode. I re again, I'm not seeing it at all. Like, who would who would play Glitz? Like he's basically a space Arthur Daly. Who, who's going to play that? Uh, uh, um. I guess, uh, what's his name? Alfie Moon? Alfie! I I, I'm sorry, I have to say every time I say his name. Uh, in fact, we have a town next week called, called Alfie Menasha. Whenever we pass it, I go, Alfie! What's his name? Okay, so he played uh, Arth Artie Daly or something in the uh, not very good uh, reboot not, uh, or, or revival, I think it was, of Minder, uh, which really missed the point. But he was, he was great casting. I guess him... He could do it. I mean, um, or uh, Bradley Walsh. You know, okay. You want you want a cheeky chappy kind of actor. Fine. But how how are you explaining that he, he didn't regenerate? Right. I I, I don't know. Uh, Samuel Gibbs. Uh, why Samuel Gibbs would uh, would be a Doctor Who would uh, would would be a focus of a... Why Sablon Glitz should be a focus of a Doctor Who spin-off? Okay, please tell me more. A Sablon Glitz series would add depth and color to the. Doctor Who universe by exploring the siege it siege your underbelly. Eh, I mean on a on a intergalactic scale, I guess. But you know, I think Ross Lee Davis can really work it out for himself, right? He could have done like a detective show or New Earth. Yeah, you know, like there's yeah, you know, with the cat nuns. I mean there's a there's a lot he could have yeah. He can make his own thing to do this, right? 
It appears with the opportunity of various unsavory characters from Doctor Who history to appear as Glitz's different employers. I mean, this does sound fun, right? Who would you cast as Glitz, though? That's a real issue. Uh, and why are you calling him Glitz if he's going to be totally different, right? This will take Glitz to various planets and uh, and puts him... Uh, uh, and uh, plants and everything puts him in life-threatening danger, forcing him to uh, blag or blast his way out of trouble. I mean, okay, here's how it would work. You have Savlon Glitz's son. Uh, 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 <laughs> could it be Savlon Glitz's and Mel's son? No, that's just too weird, right? That's just absolutely too weird. Uh, uh, but Savlon Glitz's son, they kind of did that for the... Uh, uh, what was that the 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 uh, arena show, which I wish they released on video. Whether what, they, what how they should have released it is on uh, uh, virtual reality, right? But where uh, where here come the monsters? Where it's great. It really was good. Basically, it was, uh, uh, and I only saw it through YouTube clips of people recording it that I put together because I was so obsessed. It was so clever. Okay, well, one part you had Matt Smith in this like uh, uh, like force field cage thing, and what how they did that was like uh, uh, they made a cube, uh, like a, a rectangular cube, and projected him on all four sides of the cube, right? Uh, uh, and so it looked fantastic, right? But also it had, it had Nick Briggs in it doing the voices, but he also played uh, Churchill. But uh, Nigel Planner was in it as Morganson, uh, the son of Morgan, right? Uh, uh, from uh, um, Carnival, Carnival of Monsters. So, yeah, that's kind of like yeah, what you could do. Uh, he could accept Joel's uh, uh, for profit uh, obsessed Sill before uh, beheading uh, Dorian M Moldovar. Uh, this work could take Glitz to various alien planets and uh, uh, inevitably put him in life threatening danger, forcing him to black up away out of Yeah, no, I just wrote that. But again, again, Toby Selber's dead, mate. Right? That you've got to completely reinvent the character. And it's not like he's a particularly original character. You know. Space Arthur Daly. We've had lots of the, this. Is a this is a this is a trope, right? You know the uh, um, the cheeky chappy Cockney Codman kind of thing with the heart of gold, right? We've seen it a lot, right? You don't go, oh no, we can only use Sam Long Glitz for this. But again, listen, Donald Mark Donaldson, uh, even though he doesn't like me much, he's, he 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 does have terrible ideas. I guess he wanted to write write an article, and I wanted to make a video. It all kind of works together, doesn't it? It's less like the circle of life. Um, that's sort of wider story. Glitz who come in the possession of a relic from the uh, Time Lord and Dalek War. We call it the Time War. Uh, the state of the universe uh, following the Time War is something that has never been uh, explored in real detail before. Having okay, this is your fan fiction, which is fun. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> It's your fan fiction, mate. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, the state of the universe. Uh, it's not uh, been, uh, been explored before in real detail, having uh, observed by lesser species. What price would the time war technology fe uh, uh, fetch in the intergalactic market? What's more, uh, uh, how many, uh, how many uh, nefarious villains? Uh, from Doctor Who's uh, uh, Doctor Who universe, would Glitz be uh, will be on Glitz's tail as they sought possession of it? These questions and more could tie into. Okay, this is your pitch for Big Finish. Could tie into a fascinating narrative arc for the character, but then you got to again, you keep heading at the brick wall. He's dead, right? Uh, as the rogue's redemptive journey, it will be related to this powerful artifact, showing him the inherent profit of doing the right thing. After all, it could uh, could make money. Uh, if the universe, uh, who can make money? It makes it difficult to make money if the universe is in flames. Following the original actor Tony Selby's passing, sad passing, Glitz would need to be recast with an actor with a possession of Cockney, Cockney swagger. Uh, uh, as actor like human traffic, Danny Dyer. Oh, okay. I'm on board to a Danny Dyer. Uh, uh, I think that that's got to be the uh, uh, a thumbnail. So Danny Dyer would be ideal for as Glitz, uh, and it could be a break from the rule that makes him more internationally well known. He's doing fine, mate. Okay. The more, uh, uh, the more, uh, um, for more global appeal, and given Sony's co connection, Tom Hardy or Andy Serkis would be inspired. Cast. You're out. You're mine, mate. You. I, I, I ain't like Tom Hardy. Okay. Tom Hardy, if you're going to make a spin-off TV movie, play Alfie Solomons, the, the Jewish gangster. Oh, would you not love a Peaky Blinders movie? Like, based on, on Tom Hardy's character? Man, would I watch that? And again, look, 
I, I, look, I'm I'm a very Jewy person. I like there being fun Jewish characters. I like Tom Hardy. Uh, uh, give me that movie. Okay, make that a trilogy. I want that freaking movie, right? Or Andy Serkis. Ah, I see Andy. But uh, uh, I don't know. I don't see him doing it. Uh, would be a spy casting and tapping into the appeal of the Mandalorian. Sablon Glitz would be uh, the perfect talk to spin off. <laughs> I get, I mean, not really, but okay. Exploring the wider fictional universe in a fresh and interesting way. I understand, again, in your fan fiction, where Tom Hardy is playing Sablon Glitz. Yeah, that would be good, mate, right? That would be good. I agree with you. I do agree with you. Uh, um, bit. It, bit Bit of a weird take, right? A bit of a weird take, but okay, okay. I can't really argue with that, right? I can't argue at all. There you go. Uh, uh, screen rant, screen rant. Love you, baby. Absolutely love you. Always coming up with bonkers ideas uh, uh, that kind of weirdly coincide with Doctor Who. Somehow, somehow. My name is Sheila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!